In this video, we're going to show how we can calculate the hours work and the overtime in Excel. And please note that we're mainly going to show the main concepts of calculating overtime in Excel, as calculating overtime can have so many scenarios when it comes to the shape of the data set and other things that cannot be covered in just a single video. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so our scenario here is basically that we've got the data for a single employee for a certain week. So you can see here we've got five days a week, the time in, the lunch start, lunch end, and the time out. So the time he left work, and we need to calculate the total hours he worked and the regular hours. So that's if he works eight hours or less and the overtime hours worked, which should be any hours after eight hours. And as you can see here, this is for a day shift. So this is for a shift during the day, because if you've got a night shift, there is just a small change on the formula because night shift calculations can give you misleading results. If you apply the same formula as the day shift calculations, and we will see that on the video. And this video requires you to be quite familiar with Excel date and time calculations and how date and time work in Excel. So if you're not familiar with how date and time work in Excel, I've got a, a YouTube video, my Excel date and time masterclass. The link will be below in the description. I'd recommend you watch it before you watch this video. Okay, so let's start by calculating the total hours worked. So the total hours that this employee worked. So you can see here he came in, for example, on Monday at 9 a.m. and he started his lunch break at 12 p.m. or 12 noon and finished at 12.30 and then continued work onwards until 5 p.m. So to calculate his hours worked, we're going to basically subtract his time in from the lunch start. So it's going to be lunch start time minus the time in plus we're going to also add that to the time out minus the lunch end time. And if we press enter here, you can see here we get some fractions actually. And the reason we're getting some fractions is that this is basically the fraction of the day that he worked. Each of these numbers are basically a fraction of 24 hours. So what we need to do is to multiply these numbers by 24. So I'm going to put some brackets here around the formula and then we're going to multiply that by 24. And you can see here we start getting some hours. So these are basically the number of hours that this employee worked. Now we're going to calculate the regular hours worked and the regular hours worked are basically any hours that are eight hours or less. So this number should be capped at eight hours and it should show eight hours if he's worked eight hours or more, or if he's worked less than eight hours, then it should be showing the number of hours worked that is less than eight hours. So we're going to use an if statement here. So equals if, so if this number is greater than or equal to eight hours, the standard workday, which is eight hours, I'm going to absolute that, then give me eight hours, right? If it's greater than or equal to eight hours, give me eight hours. Otherwise, give me the actual number of hours worked. And I'm going to close my brackets here, press enter. As you can see here, if it's less than eight hours, it shows the number of hours. Otherwise, if it's more than eight hours, then it shows eight hours. Now we're going to calculate the overtime hours worked and the overtime hours worked should be the number of hours that he's worked after his eighth hour on a particular day. So if his hours worked are eight hours or less, this number should be a zero. However, this number should be a positive number if he's worked more than eight hours on a particular day. Day. So we're going to use an if statement here as well. So if the number of hours worked is greater than eight hours, which is the standard workday, then give me the difference between the hours worked and the regular hours worked. Otherwise, give me a zero. So you can see here when his number of hours is eight hours or less, we get a zero. But if his worked hours are greater than eight hours, we get actually the difference in the hours worked. So the extra hours after the eighth hour. Now we're going to calculate how much we're going to pay this employee. So usually there are two ways to calculate overtime. There's overtime hours on a per day basis. So 
you get an overtime rate, let's say a 1.5 rate for every hour that is more than the eighth hour that's on a per day basis. And there's also overtime hours on a per week basis where you get paid extra. So let's say at a 1.5 rate for any hours worked greater than 40 hours a week. So we're going to do calculations for both first for the per day basis. So we got to know the total regular hours work because for these hours, we're going to pay him according to the normal rate. So this is going to be basically the summation of the regular hours worked. And then we got to know how many overtime hours he's worked. And this is going to be the summation of the overtime hours that he's worked. And then the total pay is going to be the regular hours multiplied by the standard or regular pay plus the overtime hours multiplied by the overtime hourly rate or the overtime pay, which is basically 1.5 times the standard hourly rate. So you can see here, we managed to calculate the total pay, how much we're going to pay him in total. Now we're going to calculate the pay for the overtime hours on a per week basis. So for the per week basis, any hours worked up to and including the 40th hour will be multiplied by the standard hourly rate and then any hours over the 40th hour will be multiplied by the overtime hourly rate. So here for the regular hours worked, it should be capped at 40 hours. So this number should be 40 hours or less. So you could use an if statement here, which is that if the summation of the hours worked here is less than 40, then actually give me that summation. So if it's less than 40, then give me the hours worked. Otherwise, give me the standard work week, which is 40 hours. So you can see here, this number will be capped at 40 if the employee has worked 40 hours or more. And now to calculate the overtime hours, the overtime hours are any extra hours worked greater than the 40th hour. So any extra hours after 40 hours. So we can use an if statement here, which is that if the summation of the hours worked is greater than the standard work week, which is 40 hours, then give me the difference between the summation and the standard work week, which is 40 hours. Otherwise, and for the otherwise or the value if false condition, this means that he has not worked any overtime hours because his wor hours worked because he's worked less than 40 hours. So otherwise you give me a zero and we press enter. And as you can see here, we got any extra hours over the 40 hours. And then the total pay is going to be the same formula here. So we're going to multiply the regular hours worked by the standard hourly rate plus the overtime hours worked by the overtime hourly rate. As you can see here, the overtime hours on a per day basis, this system pays a bit more than this system here, which is on the per week basis for the same number of hours in this case for the total of 43 hours. Okay guys, so that's it for how we can calculate the overtime and the work hours for a day shift. Next, we're going to see the night shift, which just has a small difference. Now on to calculating the overtime and the night hours for someone who works night shifts. So as you can see here, let's say that someone goes in in the morning at 8 a.m. and leaves work at 1 p.m. and then returns back to work at 8 p.m. and works until 2 a.m. after midnight. So he's doing night shifts here. And as you can see here, if you use the same formula to calculate the hours worked, we're going to get negative numbers. And the reason for that is that this second portion here, for example, which is basically subtracting the time in from the timeout. So timeout minus time in. If we highlight that portion and press F9 on our keyboard, you can see here we get a negative number, negative 0.75. So what's that negative number? This negative number is basically because this 2 a.m. here is going to translate to 2 over 24. And then the 8 p.m. is going to translate to 20 over 24. So we're subtracting 20 over 24 from 2 over 24. So it's 2 over 24 minus 20 over 24. So that's going to give us negative 18 over 24. That's going to be a negative number, right? So this formula is not going to work out. What we need to do is to actually wrap this formula here inside a mod and then multiply by 24 hours. So mod, we're going to do mod and then 
we're gonna do the mod of this calculation so that's the the number the calculation will be our number and then our divisor is gonna be a one and then we can close brackets here and press enter as you can see here we get the correct number of hours now let me show you how the mod function works the mod function can take two inputs so equals mod here the first input is the number so this is the number we're going to divide okay so let's say we're going to divide 10 by and then the divisor we're going to divide the 10 by this divisor which is 3 so if we divide 10 by 3 we're actually going to get three threes right if we want to break down the number 10 into threes we're gonna get three threes plus a one this one is the remainder and this is actually what the mod function is going to give us so if you want to break down the 10 you can break it down into three threes plus a remainder which is the one and this is what you get out of the mod function it's a one you can see here this cell's number formatting is a time number formatting but if we change the formatting here to a number you can see here we get a one so this is the concept of how the mod function works now let's break down the mod formula here for calculating the hours work so in our case here the number is going to be the summation of the difference between the time out and the time in right so this summation here for the difference which is our number input or number argument to the mod function is going to be a negative number if we press f9 to evaluate that it's going to be a negative number so you can see here it's a negative number and this was what's causing us an issue which is we're getting a negative number of hours when we multiply by 24 and this is why we use the mod function okay so this is a negative number here and let's go and check how the mod function works what the algorithm or the calculation that the mod function does basically and i learned that from mike excels van gervin so basically you can see here that the mod function how the algorithm works here is that it's equal to n which is our number which is our negative number minus d which is the divisor and the divisor is a one so n minus one multiplied by int n over d which is basically the int of our n which is the our negative number our negative fraction divided by d and the d here is a one right so it's basically the int of the n and the int function basically will give you an integer and it will round down your fraction if it's a negative fraction so if we write equals int and we give it a negative fraction here it will round it down to the nearest integer so it will go to the integer that is less than our fraction so what's the integer that is less than our fraction in value our fraction is a negative 0.3 for example so the integer that is less than 0.3 is going to be a negative one right so this is going to give us a negative one and let's just change the cell formatting here as you can see here it gave us a negative one so this will give us a negative one so this value int of the value is going to give us a negative one so it's going to be our negative value here minus one multiplied by a negative one which is our n value plus a one so the mod function will add a one to our negative value and thus it will transform it to a positive value because it's a fraction so it will become a positive value and then when multiplied by 24 it gives us a positive value for the hours worked and it indeed gives us the correct number of hours and let me also note that this mod formula will work the same on the day shift here so you can actually use it on both the day shift and the night shift to make sure that you get the correct results all the time whether you're calculating hours worked and overtime hours for a day shift or a night shift you can just use the same formula and it will give you the correct result all the time so thus you'd have the peace of mind that it would work either on day shifts or night shifts and then the other formulas are all the same basically as we explained for the day shift so that's it guys for how we can calculate overtime i'd recommend you download the example workbook and you play with the mod formula and dive deeper into it to be able to fully grasp the concept behind that so thanks guys for watching this video and i'll see you on the next one 
If you found this video helpful, press the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos and share it with your friends. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. You can download the example workbook and more free resources through the links below in the description. Also, please check my Excel courses, links below as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.